So this is Kaylee. She's 19, she's a cheerleader for her college, and she has a boyfriend. This guy, Mark. And one day, Kaylee and Mark go to a music festival together. And before they go in, they take a bunch of, we'll call it, rave candy. So by the time the music starts, they are feeling pretty good. They're dancing, they're vibing, and having a great time. But then, they run into Kaylee's ex-boyfriend. And Mark, he can tell Kaylee is still into him. So he gets mad, and he just like pulls her away from the conversation. And then suddenly, Kaylee and Mark are in a fight. And it's not their first one, but this one is really bad. And Mark's like, you gotta let that guy go! And that is when Kaylee drops a bomb on Mark. She basically tells him, I think I still have feelings for him. And this, of course, makes Mark even more mad, and it escalates the fight. And they're yelling at each other, and it's like killing the vibe. So Mark and Kaylee, they leave the festival. And they go, and they get in Mark's Mercedes, and they pull out of the parking lot. And they're still fighting when they drive away. And then fast forward to a few hours later, and Mark's Mercedes pulls up to a hospital. And he starts flashing his lights, and he's honking his horn. And when the paramedic comes out, Mark's like, My girlfriend isn't breathing! I need help! And so the paramedic runs over, and opens the passenger door, and she sees Kaylee laying in the front seat. And she's mostly naked and covered with bruises, and she's not breathing. And Mark tells them she overdosed. So they rush Kaylee inside, and the doctors, they try and resuscitate her seven different times. But unfortunately, it's too late. Kaylee is declared brain dead. So Kaylee's mom and stepdad, who we'll just call mom and dad, so they're called in, and mom and dad have to make an incredibly difficult decision. And they ultimately take Kaylee off life support. Meanwhile, police, they take Mark into the hospital chapel, and they ask him what happened. And Mark tells them they went to a festival, they took drugs, and they drank and that they got into a fight and left. But then he says that after they left, they drove to an empty parking lot and they parked the car and they smashed. And that it was consensual rough sex. And then after that, she OD'd on the drugs she had taken hours before back at the festival. And Mark's story makes enough sense to them, so they let him go. Until... Three months later, the autopsy report comes back, and it states that Kaylee was killed not by an overdose, but by blunt force trauma to the head and face. And ultimately, her death is ruled a homicide. So police, they immediately arrest Mark. They're like, rough sex, huh? Yeah, right. And here's his mugshot. And they charge him with first degree murder. Oh, but it's not over. Because two years later, Mark's case finally goes to trial. And they go through all the evidence and all the testimony, and then they send the jury off to deliberate. And then ten hours later, the jury comes back, and they say, Ah, oh, we can't agree on a verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, jury, I'm declaring a mistrial. So the judge declares a mistrial. So they gotta try the case again and go through all this a second time. And Kaylee's parents, they're like, what the f***? Because they know Mark is responsible for their daughter's death. So while they're waiting years for the second trial to start, they decide they need to show the next jury exactly what happened that night in Mark's car. Now, Mom and Dad, they're not your average parents. Mom is a scientist and Dad is an engineer for NASA. So the first thing Dad does is he studies the autopsy photos and reports for hours and hours. And he focuses in on two specific bruises. A small circle right above Kaylee's right ear and one on the other side of her head above her left ear. And then mom and dad come up with the theory that Mark pushed Kaylee's head and smashed it against the lock button on the car door. Then dad builds a 3D model of Kaylee's head to test that theory. Oh, but mom and dad aren't done yet. They then go out and track down Mark's Mercedes, which Mark had sold that Mercedes to someone else years ago. But they track it down and they buy it from the new owner. So now they have the vehicle that the murder happened in. Then they hire a private investigator to help them film a reenactment of the crime. And they're using like actors and they film it in the Mercedes. I mean, they went all out. Meanwhile, they're all still waiting on the second trial to start. And this story is all over the local news. And Mark, he knows he looks guilty as hell. And he has not been very silent about all this on social media. Wow, 75% of people think I'm guilty. That just means 75% of people in the world are gonna have to suck Seems like a nice guy. So then about three more years go by, and finally they start the second trial. And the prosecuting attorneys, they are ready this time. And they go through the whole trial, and then the moment of judgment comes. And the jury leaves for deliberation, and everyone is on the edge of their seat because of what happened last time. And then, after a period of time, the jury comes in, and they give their verdict. They find Mark not guilty of murder. <laughs> 
And mom and dad, they are instantly crushed. I mean, this is devastating. I mean, will justice never be served? But then the jury says something else. They actually do find Mark guilty of aggravated assault, which carries a maximum punishment of 20 years in prison. So then the judge ultimately sentences Mark to the maximum and he gets 20 years. So maybe they did get some justice. I mean, it's not a perfect ending, but I'm sure mom and dad at least feel a little better. Shout out to Texas.